Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 111 of Survival of Fitted. Unless I'm mistaken, you're here chilling here with your boy Joe Williams, aka 1080p Joe. We got none other than EMP or no in the building today. We have a very, very, very special guest in the building. Would you like to introduce yourself? What's going on, guys? Olivier Rogers. Nice to see everybody. I'm happy to be yes, here. Um, so, I mean, you're Olivier Rogers, the person, but there's also Olivier Rogers, the brand. You want to tell us a little bit about your brand real quick? Yeah. Um, I've had my side of my brand in late 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it feels like, it feels like way longer than that. But, uh, when I started the brand at first, uh, I wanted to be a stylist. Um, but I knew at that, at that time. It was just like, I'm like, is me st being a stylist, is that going to be able to play, pay the, you know, the bills and things like that? And I've always been into fashion ever since I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. being in New York and seeing my mom get dressed in the morning. And my mom's always been like a fashion lady. Um, when she goes to church, she takes it serious and things like that. So like I've clothes has always been like number one for me. Um, obviously, you know, I played sports in high school football, basketball, but I just always been like that guy in high school that whether whether I was wearing like shorts, a hoodie, like people always interested in what I was wearing. So like I knew at some point in life that when it came to like working, I knew it would be something in fashion. So I knew like whether it was styling or having my own brand, it would be one of the one of the two. So, um, you know, I grew up with a lot of athletes. So mm -hmm. when I started my brand, it was, you know, it was, it was kind of easy for me to get my stuff on certain guys because of the relationships I had with other players. Um, and, you know, slowly, like, I just kept growing the brand and just, I wanted to do like a, I wanted to do, have a logo that would stick with everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, like, I know, um, you look at other brands, every brand has a main logo that they use that, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, it's that brand. Um, so for me, when I, when I decided to book, cause my first shirts were koi fish shirts. Um, yeah. I had just dis designed this shirt to see where it would go. Uh, Quavo actually was one of the first artists I would say to wear Olivier. And at that point, I just never really looked back. Um, but I was still trying to figure out what, what logo, you know, you, and then the cross logo was just like very simple. Yeah. And mm -hmm. plus my name's Olivier Rogers. So I felt like the name, my name was to be made for a brand, you know, like my mom mm -hmm. gave me that name and it, it, it just made perfect sense for me to be a designer. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, also I wanted to, my friends were saying, Oh, you're crazy. Uh, you for trying to price like a t-shirt for like $350. Like, who do you think you are? And things like that. But I knew where I wanted to take my brand and where I wanted to go as far as being a designer. You know, I never yeah. like priced my things lower. Um, and also I always wanted to play the brand hard. I wanted people to not be able to get it so easily. So that's why I never really went crazy and mass produced it. I put you it in some demand. Small. Yeah, I, I put in certain boutiques like Patreon of the New, and I did a small like uh, thing with Kiff, and mm -hmm. you know, like you got people on Grail like reselling my stuff for like fifteen hundred or two thousand, you know, comparing me to Off White and things like that, you know. Um, so I mean, it, it's just it's just for a kid like me, it's just it's just crazy from where I started to where you know I'm at now, and I'm still trying to figure out like things that could you know potentially obviously make me put me in like that top top level of designing yeah. i know my brand is well known as far as like nba players and athletes and things like that but you know i design for everybody you know i design for guys like you guys mm -hmm. you know it's not just the brand for just athletes you know it's rappers wear it are you um, saying that i'm not an athlete you're funny. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> yeah, anyone can wear Olivia. You know what I mean? Like, so it's yeah, not really like for a certain crowd. I know it's like 
everybody sees the guys wearing it in the tunnel. It's just, you know, I just have a really great relationship with athletes and they like my yeah. stuff, you know? And you were first. Oh, yeah. Cause like there's, there's always been like uh swaggy basketball players throughout history, whether it's Walt Frazier, Dennis Rodman, Nick Young, you know, early Russell Westbrook and still current Russell Westbrook. Um, but like the normalization of basketball players dressing up, because like you remember, like we we started talking in like 2018, right when League Fits started. You were probably the first designer to ever hit up League Fits. And I was like, oh wow, like these basketball players really fuck with this brand. Like you saw the value in getting your gear on basketball players before everyone else kind of did. Cause now like even like the big designer brands, the fucking Dolce & Gabbana, the Balenciagas, like they're finally like putting basketball players front row and shit like that in like 2022. Um, but in 2018, like you kind of saw the storm that was coming. You were like, oh yeah, there's like five swaggy guys, but everyone is about to start dressing. And now fast forward a few years and the entire league dresses up. You don't even have to be a superstar. You can be the ninth man in the rotation and dress up. So you were re- designer wise, you were really early. You're the first designer that I remember like seeing, like heavily seeing the value in basketball players as I guess models is just simply put it. I would say that, but I mean, I, I also like these guys are my friends. Like these aren't like, you know, these are real relationships. You know, I have real relationships with Brandon Ingram, with Kevin Durant, you know, with shy, you know, it's just, it's it's real relationships with these guys. It's not like, oh, like these guys been rocking with me since the beginning before I yeah. even had a brand. So it's not, it's nothing is forced. Everything I remember when Clipper Shea was wearing your gear. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, and it's funny how me and him uh, became friends. I have a little brother who actually plays basketball, who's a senior in high school, who, you know, they kind of look alike. So one of my friends who's a big Kentucky fan had hit me up. And like sent me his Instagram was like, yo, this the point guard for for Kentucky looks just like your little brother. And I was like, oh wow. I was, and then I just hit the follow button and things like that. And you know, he became one of those guys in the NBA. So nothing was ever like force or mm-hmm. everything's organic here, you know. Um so, but yeah, it's funny because NBA players, it's 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 crazy to me how a lot of people like try to like shit on athletes about, oh, he looks crazy in clothes because he's 6'11 or this and that. It's like, do people understand that these guys can't walk into a Dover Street market and just find <laughs> anything that fits yeah. them like that? Like, so it's like, it's it's tough to like, obviously like rappers are 5'9", 5'10", 5'11", uh, 6'1". Like these guys are perfect height for clothes. So everything kind of, you know, fits their body style, body type. So it's like, mm-hmm. it, it. I, I want people to stop just saying that, they need to s- stop saying that athletes aren't fly. These guys, it's harder for a six, eight guy to figure something that fits his body, you know? So that's the reason why you may think, oh, this guy's not fly. And let's not, obviously there's players that are 6'10 who put that stuff together re- really well, mm-hmm. but they, you know, maybe their body types are just built for clothes. So it's easier for them than a guy who's 260 or 7'1". He can't find the right denims, you know? But I think the unique body types are kind of what makes it like, like look at like a bull bull, right? Like he probably has like one of the most unique physiques in all of sports, period. And so just the way that clothes look on him is so interesting, even if he's just wearing a bloody Osiris hoodie and, and flared Rick pants. You know what I mean? But the way it looks on him is so unique because he's like seven one, right. eighty pounds. You know what I mean? And that's like, that's cool though. Like I appreciate that. I think that's like something you would never see on a rapper. Also All though, also bows, bows in the, before basketball, bows in a fashion circle. You know, he chills with- oh, yeah. like, See, oh, we were just like, talking about that like too he's last in episode. The mix, like, so he knows what's going on before basketball. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's not like uh, some kid who just been playing basketball, who just got NBA check. Now he's a fashion guy. Like it's, he's been a fashion kid and been in the mix, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not, you know, he knows what's going on. That's well, a question, I, I don't want to take us too far back in the conversation, but a question that I wanted to ask, you mentioned now that we have like a designer here with like a certain sense of like demand for his product. How do you feel about like the resale market on your clothes? Like when you see these pieces selling for $1,000 on grill, you know what I'm saying? Like what's like your reaction to that? 
it's it's funny because um I remember when I first started my brand, I was like, listen, man, uh, my brand is Olivier Rogers. It's, I'm a French man. Um, I want to do something that, you know, to, I, I want to start something that can be one of those brands in fashion houses in Paris and, and things mm-hmm. like that. So for me, like, I keep my stuff very limited because I don't ever want to see it on the shelves at a boutique store for sale or, on sale, whatever you want to say. Um, so for me, I just think it's kind of crazy that, you know, I'm going on Grail and I'm seeing people selling my stuff. Like right now, if you guys go on Grail, uh, there was, there's a yellow Olivier hoodie. Um, mm-hmm. The kid wanted like $2,000 for it. I don't know if it sold yet, but it was just That's like, insane, man. I'm That's just, crazy. I, I'm just like $2,000. He's like, yeah, he's, this guy's the next off-white. His his stuff. Oh, you messaged him. Of course, I messaged him. And but he, one, he didn't know you what, was Olivier, though. No, listen to this. So <laughs> you I, hit tell him. I hit the guy up, and you want to hear something funny? Mm-hmm. That hoodie does. I did a collab with Patron of the New. So all the yellow Olivier hoodies said Patron of the New on it. I remember that. Um, and I only, I only did twenty five of those. So for that hoodie. I only gave that to one person before I actually did that uh, collaboration, which was Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. So I hit the guy, I'm like, wait a minute, why doesn't it say Patreon on it? I look back and I'm like, I hit the guy, I'm like, wait, this guy, either Kevin Durant left it in the locker room or something, and somebody, one of the workers took it and then gave it to their nephew or whatever. I gave that hoodie to Kevin Durant when he was on the Golden State Warriors. We, so mm. I hit the kid up. He's like, "Yeah, my uncle works for the Warriors. So whoever has this hoodie, that's Kevin Durant's hoodie that they're trying to resell for two two thousand dollars." Oh, that's crazy! What the heck? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my so, god. That's so I'm wild. just like, "Wow." He's like, "Yeah, my uncle, it was a gift." The kid said it was a gift, and I was just like, "Wow." You know, I was just trolling with him. I was like, "I'll give you seven hundred." And he's like, <laughs> no, he's like, no, this is, retails at fifteen hundred, and I'm just like. Right. So brother, do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I never. It's funny. The, he didn't sell it because he hit me up like last week. It was like, bro, will you settle for six? And I just never. Wait, so responded. you never told him who you were this whole this whole time? You never told him who you were? No, bro. Dude, That's fuck crazy. burner Twitter accounts. Fuck burner Instagram accounts. We're making burner grilled accounts no, all no, 2022. It, it, it's, it, he doesn't know it's on grilled. That's a, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if I was a designer, bro, I'm coming after all my product on the but, resale market. Like, I'm like, yo. But it's funny. It's <laughs> funny because I'm not going to lie to you. I sold a few of my things on Grail. Um, one hoodie. Um, it's the black embroidery with the silver on it. I had posted mm-hmm. online just on Grail. I'm like, yo, let me see. I, I put it up for 1500 Not, not in, in my mind. I'm like, all right, let's 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 see if this will sell. I remember I was at Art Basel. Kid DM me on Olivier and was like, "Yo, bro, I need that black hoodie that I just saw um, quickly on the Knicks wearing. Please, please, please." I was like, "Bro, I'm com- coming soon. Coming soon, um, bro." The next day, the kid went and bought the hoodie off off my account for fifteen hundred dollars. He Jeez. bought it, and I was like, "Wow, that's crazy!" But I haven't dropped. In hoodies in like a year and month so I'm about to drop yeah. in a few weeks so you guys are gonna start seeing Olivier logo hoodies all over again you know wait so why and, is that how come you haven't have a, like how come you haven't I mean, dropped I just, it over you know, I just I just was trying to like get the brand out there with like jeans and I wanted to just do something different you know I, I just the fact that I was dealing with uh, you know, it was during the pandemic this happened. Oh, uh, yeah. So it was like, you know, we weren't really like, people were at home. So I, I just kind of took a little break. So now I'm back in full effect. I'm about to actually drop um, within the next couple of weeks. You guys are going to see, um, I got sweat sweaters, sweatpants, T-shirts. I'm at, so I'm dropping this T-shirt, uh, St. Martin. Brandon Ingram actually wore it yesterday. Um, it's hmm. St. Martin, Marigo. That's the um, island that I was born on. I was born in St. Martin, and then I moved to Where's New York. Where's that? St. Martin's a, it's a, uh, island it's in the Caribbean. 
Um, gotcha. I was born on the French side, but I moved to New York when I was four. So, um, you know, I want to kind of, I, I feel like there's not nobody that was born in St. Martin that has a brand and a, a story to tell, you know? So for me, I kind of want to put, you know, where my father and grandparents and, on, you know, where they're from, I kind of want to, you know, put them on the map, you know, and not just mm -hmm. keep it just about just me. Now I want to tell a story for, you know, my whole family, you know? So I just think I that's that. going to be dope seeing like people wearing St. Martin on their t-shirts and things like that. Yeah. Well, yo, you know how much I love your brand. Joe loves your brand, but you're also just one of my favorite people to talk about basketball fashion with. Like, I just love hopping on the phone with you and our five minute calls turn to 30 minute calls, just talking about everybody. So we might as well do it on the pod a little bit. Okay. Um, oh, no. What are some, I mean, you're, you're one of the best dressed dudes that I, I know. What are some trends, and I kind of hate the word trends, but what are some like trends and, or just like styles that you see that you wear, you see around New York that haven't hit basketball yet that you want to see? I'm be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm so over the skinny pants. Um, <laughs> the skinny pants, it's like, okay, like my brother's in high school, you know, and mm -hmm. Obviously, like, you know, you got a, a certain crowd of like rock stars and people like that who who are into that super tight, you know, mm -hmm. that's their look, that's their aesthetic, and that's how they want to, you know. But for me, it's just like it's time for something new, you know. And yeah, for me, when I look at fashion, um I like to look at Back in the day, like, there's a show that I used to really, I mean, I still watch it to this day. Martin Lawrence, to me, was, like, one of the flyest dudes uh, growing up when I was mm -hmm. watching television. And just the way he he dressed, I, I, I admired that. Um, I think athletes don't need to spend a lot of money in order to be fly. That's what they need to, mm -hmm. some of them need to understand that, you know, for the most part, like, I don't spend a lot of money on clothes. Like my sneakers and shoes, like I wear this, I'm, I'm a uniform guy, so I wear the same dress up shoes a hundred different ways. Um, yeah. I'm not a sneaker guy. So for me, it's all about thrifting. And you can, ma you can mix thrift clothes with designer stuff and make it look good. You know, like people going into all these stores and spending five grand, 10 grand on- And they don't look good. And, and they don't <laughs> understand that, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to me, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I go thrifting, I go on grilled, or whether it's the real, real, like, there's different ways to really buy clothes without spending a crazy amounts of money. Especially where it's like, that Gucci jacket that you just bought at Gucci, you could have put, $2,900, you could have went to the railroad and bought that same piece for 800, 20% off, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, like, I try to tell my friends, like, bro, I can show you how to stay rich forever. You know, some people don't care. Some people care. For me, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't ever want to go to this uh, store and buy the new latest, you know, LV jacket that I know I'm going to see 25 other athletes in Walk, walk, walking through the tunnel so it's mm -hmm. like you gotta give and take like what you spend your money on you know for me yeah. i'll go on grilled and i'll buy that button up shirt for 200 that i really like that i'm gonna wear a hundred different times 20 different ways with like some olivier trouser pants you know with my prada shoes rather than go to you know a Dover Street and spend eight hundred on that same shirt that I could just wait and find that same similar t shirt or button up t shirt on at the at Dover Street, you know. I mean, that is I, that I'm is there. the cheat code to dressing, like getting into I mean, the real real and shit. I've, that's like something I did last year. You'll never see me in the same outfit with somebody else ever, unless it's like an Olivier piece or something. But mm -hmm. yeah. like my style is very like, you know, I call it rich prep, hood prep, oh yeah, hood, hood prep. prep. You know, like, like that. one day I could be on my preppy stuff. And then the next day I'm on my New York, you know, super baggy denim, 
with my uh pelly belly jacket. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. I could for switch sure. it up on you. Like I don't have one way of dressing. Um, and for for that, it's like I look at these guys like I love the fact that you know a lot of these NBA players like they're starting to understand. You know, like the skinny pants thing is really, really like dying down. Yeah. Um, especially it's like you can't be two fifty with legging jeans on. It just doesn't. It's look insanity. Like, I don't, it's it's insanity. insanity is what it Not is. Fine, really insanity. You know? It's like when I look at style, I look like the way I dress. I feel like I want everything that I wear. Twenty years from now, when you go back and look at the photos. You look like, oh wow, that's still flying twenty years from now. You know, not mm-hmm. not so. You wear like you wearing this piece, and it's like, oh my god, it's so loud. And it's like, and you, you look back three years from now on Instagram, you're like, what the hell was I wearing? Why was I? Because yeah, it's trendy. Thing? When you when you do, I I said earlier, I, I hate trend. trends. When you when you buy into trends too much, that's when you end up like. Looking back, ten like sh- shit. Remember Joe? You remember when we had like Dwayne Wade and uh, and Carmelo on the pod? And looking back at some of their outfits from fifteen years ago, and it was like even they themselves were like, "Damn, that shit was crazy. What were we doing?" Super. And cringe. that was so what funny. Yeah, yeah. But like back then, it's it was so trendy. You know what I mean? But like if you don't follow mm-hmm. trends, you can look like uh, look at like Kurt Cobain, how he dressed in like the nineties. You could wear that today and no one looks at a Kurt Cobain outfit. It's like, except maybe like the wedding dress and shit. But no one looks at that and is like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I'd put that exact same outfit on today. As a matter of fact, I do. So when you I don't look into trends. Yep. <laughs> yeah. When you don't look into trends too much, that's actually how you put together timeless outfits. There's a, there's a few mm-hmm. people, though, that I would say like that influence athletes. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I pay attention. Um, but. Obviously, you know, I got to give a shout out to Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was putting that stuff on effortlessly and it was just coming so natural. Um, I actually was watching a video of AI the other day and he was on Complex, I think. And he was talking about outfits with Matt Barnes, I believe. And he was like, kind of like looking back at his fits. I'm like, no, Allen Iverson, you was putting that shit on very easily. <laughs> and it was just... So it wasn't a costume. Was it looks it looks trying. like him. Yeah. Right. Now I see guys in the league. He doesn't even know this, but he knows this, but they're dressing like him, you know, and with the mm-hmm. super baggy look, with the chains and do rags and things like that. AI made that fly, you know, because it was just him. Um, another person that I would say that has a lot of guys that he doesn't get credit, which he should, he gets credit like globally, but ASAP Rocky is somebody that a lot of these guys like try to imitate. And ASAP Rocky's another one who is very effortless. It's just him. He's not trying to be this guy or that guy. And he has a million sons in the world that want to be him. <laughs> and, you know, he should be getting a check for a lot of these guys. Charles from a lot of man. these guys, so to say. Every, every mood board, every, like, athlete, when they make like their mood board with their stylist for the season, there's a picture of ASAP Rocky somewhere on it. A million percent. He fits sure. in every cor- like category of fashion, bro. Like yeah, even sure. earlier when we're talking about thrifting, bro, like the flannels and stuff like that, he had like a chokehold on flannel culture, or like it was insanity. But yeah, every every single facet of fashion, like he just easily, easily, yeah, has a space in it. Like Crazy. some of these guys won't say it, but I'll say it for him because you know, like I'm around, so. He got a lot of dudes that like that walk in into the tunnel thinking they're him, you know, and <laughs> it's 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 obviously everybody has somebody to look up to. It's no sh- no shade. Mm-hmm. It's just like I I don't know if he pays attention or knows like oh wow like where like that guy wants to dress like me, you know. But it's like you know if you know you know if you're into fashion and you have an eye, you see okay this guy wants to be like him or. He wants to dress like him, which is fine. You know, everybody has somebody that they look up to or idolize when it comes to fashion, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's what's up. That's yeah, what's but up. the ba- the baggy look, the baggy look is is is, is, is cool, you know? Um, I think that's definitely something that I see on the, on the guys that I like. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know... Shay's doing his thing, you know, with mm-hmm. you know, doing that uh, look and, 
mixing it up and switching it up. Like, I, I really like that, you know, for, for him, you know? Me too. It's cool to see guys, like, I remember, like, a few years ago, Russell Westbrook would go viral because he wore, like, the crazy, like, skinny, like, leather pants and stuff. And now he's wearing, like, baggy, light wash Levi's and shit, too. I mean, one thing I could say about Russ is Russ doesn't care about what nobody thinks. I think in fashion, that's, like, the most important thing. Like, Hell if you yeah. worry about what people think about your style or the way you dress, you'll never, ever, ever make it, you know, as far as in fashion. Like, for me, I'm sure, like, I, I got people that are like, yo, like, you just like a homeless guy. Like, what is that? And You know, you got, you got hope. I'm like, okay, cool, bro. That's fine. You know, but mm -hmm. people who know style know I have style. You know, I don't have to speak and say that I have style. You can just see me and yeah. know that, you know. You got to tell them. That's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah, like, but, bro, you, the dude was wearing, like, tight legging pants who said this to me with some black uh, Timberlands looking crazy. And I was What's up like, with these tight know. pants, bro? Is there just, like, a bunch of people running around New York with skinny jeans on? Like, what's going on uh, out there? Honestly, the biker jeans. The, one thing yeah, about right? York, it's like, what year is it, yeah? One thing about us in New York, I feel like what I love about New York City so much is when I leave my house and I get dressed, there's always somebody, at least one person that makes me feel like, damn, I got to go back in the crib and go get fly. Like, that's, that's one thing about New York that I love. You know, it always there's always somebody in the street, whether it's a girl or a guy who motivates me to go back and change. You know, when I go other places, I don't get that, bro. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm... Um, I definitely, I haven't been, but I definitely fuck with what they have going on in London. Shout out to my boy Skepta. You know, he's definitely one of those guys who- what they call it blowcore, blowcore. <laughs> the jorts, the jorts and the like retro soccer jerseys and shit. Yeah, like, you know, mm -hmm. I, 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 got a, I got a few soccer movies, you know, uh, Venetius Jr. Uh, I didn't know how big time he was until I linked with him in Miami and saw that mm -hmm. soccer's on a different planet. You know, I'm so tied into basketball, but you know, I got the I got soccer guys that's like hitting me up and stuff that wanna um, you know, get some Olivier. So I'm I'm expanding. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. I feel you on um, that. Well, I guess something I something I wanted to ask earlier in the conversation, and I think a lot of people were probably surprised being that you're a designer who like is you know what I'm saying, has these like insane resale prices. You talked about thrifting. When did you first like start realizing the importance of like thrifting and like, you know, resale markets, secondhand apparel, things like that? See, the thing is, the thrifting I, the thrifting I do is still semi-expensive. It's not, I'm not thrift. I mean, it all depends. Like I got this spot in um, Rhode Island that I go to when I go visit my mm -hmm. mom. Um... I'll buy like a blazer for $12, you know, and I'll mix and match it with my CDG slacks that cost $700 mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. with, with a um, T-shirt underneath with some $900 Prada loafers that I wear every single day. Um, so like I, I, I mix and match, you like, you know, like it depends where I'm at. Like if I'm in LA, you know, I'll go to second street you know, and I'll go thrifting there. But that's like, when I say expensive thrift, I'm, they have Rick Owens, they have Cone, they have Ismiaki, they have um, Supreme, they have all other brands that's mixed in. So it's like the cheapest you'll get a, a t-shirt there is like 120. Yeah. But yeah. I still consider that cheap when you compare it to like going to like LV or Gucci or Balenciaga. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's when I got, I've been into thrifting for, I want to say since like 2016 ish, maybe a little earlier than that, that that's mm -hmm. when I started to realize, okay, I don't want to be dressing like anybody else. I've always been in my yeah, own yeah. lane though, when it comes to like wearing clothes and things like that, you know, I just never, so I just never want to dress like the next man, you know? So I, I, like, like I said, like today, yesterday I wore a Supreme jacket, um, you know, with 
some blue denim jeans that I thrifted with Prada loafers. But then today I might be completely, you know, some high, uh, some slacks with the socks showing uh, button up with his shirt tucked in, you know, with my messenger bag. It's all dip. Like I just, I, I'll never have one way of dressing up. Yeah. You know, so I just think that athletes and just everyone in general should just think bigger instead of, oh, let me go on Instagram. Oh shit. This brand is popping right now. Let me buy all this stuff. Like you should still be able, like, I love the fact that like I saw Jordan the other day, Clarkson where um, a Ed Hardy jacket, which was cool. Cause I'm like, I bet, you know, it's like, you don't stop trying to follow. Oh, some people may look like, oh, why is he wearing that? That's like played out. There's no such thing as being played out. It's all on how you do it. You know, it's all on how you make it look. It's no such thing as being played out. There's nothing that's played out. But yes, the skinny jean look is just oversaturated. Like, you shouldn't be dressing like a 16-year-old high school kid, you know, who's wearing no. skinny legging pants. But everybody even when, has yeah. reference on. Even when there's no such thing as played out, skinny jeans are still played out. R.I.P. skinny jeans. Don't wear skinny jeans, dog. Not going to happen. Please. Uh, speaking of skinny jeans, actually, I shouldn't say that. But you see Zion Williamson's outfit last night? He wore the big, <laughs> puffy white jacket. I do. Oh, God. Um, and the whole thing, everyone was like, so I guess they were playing in Chicago. So he was probably playing. He's like, Chicago is a cold city. I'm going to wear this. It's like a big puffy jacket. And they said, it's funny. The announcers were like, you can't ban the snowman. But anyway, I guess it was like 68 degrees in Chicago that night. Um, and everybody in the comments section was like going crazy because they're like, how are we wearing that when it's damn near 70 degrees? I just want to have a conversation about uh, this ba- basketball style and the weather. This is my thing, right? Very simple, very straightforward with this situation. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Zion's obviously coming from his hotel where he probably had the AC blasting. That mm-hmm. they, you know, hotel AC crazy. Hopping on the bus, yeah. it's cold <laughs> on the bus. Leaving and hopping back in car service. He doesn't really like. He's not really feeling the heat anyway. These guys yeah. are mm-hmm. in and out of buses and Ubers, and so it's like when people, you know, it's just like I just think like people always have something to say, whether it's negative or positive so i mean you know you, you you're not in his body he might have been cold or he might be coming down from a from a cold like we don't know you know so it's mm-hmm. like yeah now nah, if you were wearing is- that in vegas then you'd be like yo bro like what are you doing but yeah fine. it wasn't he wasn't over it there. is it is funny because like if they are outside at all it's maybe for like 10 seconds because it's like hotel it goes hotel Bus, bus goes straight underground in the arena. I mean, look at like Thanasis. He plays in Milwaukee, which is obviously super cold. When he goes to a home game, he doesn't go outside. Like his car is inside his building and it goes straight to underneath the arena and into the tunnel. Like, my point exactly. My point yeah, exactly. like what are, we, what, are we, what are we doing? I actually remember one of the first looks I ever did was, you know, David Duke Jr. from uh, also from Rhode Island. We did, uh, it's actually probably my favorite look I've ever styled. Um, it's one of the first ones I ever did, but we did a, this big puffy Rick jacket with a balaclava, big uh, big bag. I don't know if you I remember think I that remember, I do remember that. All black. We all remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah remember all that. black. Yeah. All black. And that was the same. Everyone was like, it's 80 degrees in Brooklyn. I'm like, he ain't go outside. <laughs> right. He's in the car with hair on and he probably took like, the jacket off when he got inside the car. Like I saw right. something yesterday in Ben Simmons comments and they were like, it's fr- it's it's not even it's freezing in New York City and it's like oh bro this guy probably has the heat on in his car and he's jumping out right in the arena and then he's jumping back in the car and going home. These people don't really they don't think they just you know what I mean. Also, yeah. like, can we just appreciate the facts? Like, obviously, like shit, basketball style is my livelihood. It's affected your livelihood, Joe. It's your job too. Um, but like, it's okay to accept that, like. It's a little impractical. Like, it's okay. Like, these guys aren't dressing for real life because it's not real life. It's the tunnel. And that's what makes it fun. When you stop taking basketball fashion so fucking serious, that's when, like, you'll start to have more fun with it and then you'll start to appreciate it more. But but basketball players are somewhat the new fashion guys also, bro. Because they, No, they're, no, no. Talk they are it. the new fashion guys. Because they are. 
you but gotta it's not think. necessarily practical. M- NBA league fits. It's like this is every single day that you know there's an Instagram post of an athlete because they there's a game every other day. They have eighty two red carpets a year. Exactly. So it's like mm-hmm. even for like actress and actors and rappers, like you're not seeing their fits every day on social media unless they're ASAP, Trav. You know, like. Sir, sir. Even then, dude, we don't see 82 ASAP outfits a year. Exactly. Exactly my mm-hmm. point. So it's like, these are the only guys that, you know, we can look at every single day and see, oh, what's yeah. this guy wearing today? You know? And it's funny because you, you, you said something earlier um, that a lot of these brands are, set, are trying to sit these guys front row at their fashion shows, mm-hmm. you see, you look at Shane. He he was that Tommy Hill figure. Shit, he, he walked Tom, in the show. With right. Tom Brown. Yeah, he's he's at um he's at uh, Tom Brown. Correct. He's at a lot of these fashion shows, and he's becoming um one of those guys who people really like when it comes to putting that stuff on. He, and and another thing I I I realize is like there's a few guys in the league that are very lucky. I'm six three six four. So it's like, mm-hmm. I'm like perfect height to make everything look really good, you know, because yeah. like my body Subtle is flex. good. But if you look at Devin Booker, D'Angelo Russell, Shea, Jordan Clarkson, Tyrese, like all these guys have perfect heights to make clothes look good. You it's know what I mean? So it's easy for the, so, certain guys, you know, they're lucky and they wear a size 12 or 13. Like, I have guys that, like, for instance, Zion Stylus, I was with him when he was out here, and, you know, he was going around looking for shoes for Z, and people don't understand. Z's like a size 15. So it's like there's damn near nothing in his size for him to really... So it's hard to really... You know, the shoes make the fit a lot of times. So most of the time. So it's it's difficult. People, that, that's what I'm saying. Like people are like, oh, well, they're not fly. Well, it's hard to be fly every single day when you're a size 19 shoe or 18. It, it's it's <laughs> bro, difficult. Talk you about know? it, bro. Talk you're, like, about it. You're, you're, this rapper guy that you fuck with is a nine. Of course he's able <laughs> to wear this and that and this and that. You know what I mean? Like people don't think about th- these things when it comes to like body proportion and things like that. They don't think about that. Yeah, when nah. you like actually like have like perspective on the whole thing, and we're talking about like eighty two games, eighty two red carpets, bro. There's like there is like a pressure to perform. Like Jordan Clarkson, I'm sure he probably doesn't feel the pressure because he's just doing him because he's you know what I'm saying. But my like, bro, if JC popped out in like a sweatsuit, people in the comment section are probably gonna be like, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna notice it. Like if he has an off day or just takes a day off, they're probably gonna notice it. Like there's eighty two games, and there's like a certain sense to you know what I'm saying to perform. And when we talk about the body type, like, bro, these dudes wearing, like, size 15. It's not easy to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's 82 size 15s? Like, that's not easy, dog. Like, right. it's not like, an easy like thing. Like, Prada, Prada, Gucci, for the most part, they only make up to a 14, you know, in most of their mm-hmm. stuff. I'm a size 13. So it'd be difficult for me to get certain things. So I could just yeah. imagine the guy that's a 15 plus. It's, it's difficult. Like, I remember, for, for, uh, I have another story. I was with Jalen Brown from the Celtics and they had just played Brooklyn and me and him went to Dover street together. And he legit said, I want everything in a two X on this floor. Like the guy was like, I'm so (laughs) sorry. We don't really have that much two X's up here or something. And it's just like, okay, like now what, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. a lot of these guys would have everything that they wanted if, they had their size. Like I was telling, uh, me and Chet been talking and Chet's been like asking me for advice and things like that. And it's like, he even, he's like thinking, so he's like, yo, I don't really want to promote a lot of brands. Um, I just want to be clean, you know, but it's mm-hmm. tough at his height. But, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm sure like he'll think of something or brands will reach out and get him right. Mm-hmm. I feel that, I feel that. You've started styling a bit now. Um, and I think like one thing, like, 
you know, I think the best stylists, like all their clients dress um, a little different because if you put all your clients in the exact same thing, you're probably not doing your job because you want them to dress like them at the end of the day. Um, but what is like an Olivier staple or someone sees a basketball player wearing something? It could be like the most minor thing, but even if they don't see your name tagged, they know that's an I Olivier I mean, my Rogers staple, I'm, I'm, gonna lie, I'm not going to lie to you, my staple piece is some dress up shorts. Some black mm-hmm. dressed up shoes, button up. That's my staple. That's like a, that's like, you know, that's an Olivier. Or or switch the button up for a hoodie. Um, yeah. I love my, I love, like, I, I would show you guys, like, I'm, let me, not to, let me show you guys my everyday. Oh, here we go. So for those who know, he's, right. he's off camera. He's for getting the product. Coming back. So for everybody for out there. Business. These are the these these right here. I have five pairs of these. Yeah. These mm-hmm. are Prada Derbies. Um, this is actually like a DS pair. You can kind of tell that it's never been worn. Yeah. Right. Okay. This shoe right now on Grail, I, I I think I saw these going for two two thousand dollars. Um, I wear these every day. Jeez. And this is my uniform. With anything. Every single day. Um, so we might see we might see a few a few of your guys wearing those too. I mean, these are you can't find these. These are twenty twenty, I believe. These are twenty twenty, yeah. but they have them in Prada, the Prada store, but they have like a, a different design on them. But yeah. I, first off, I'm in New York City, so I walk a lot. So mm-hmm. I just feel like this shoe is something that you know, like it, it it's it's good. Winter, summer, you know, the wear and tear. This is like driving like a Jeep Wrangler, you know. It's the daily driver. It's <laughs> yeah, the daily you know driver I mean? of the shoes. Um, what did he say earlier? A hundred different hundred also, different times, twenty different ways. The Prada oh, Derby is the new Jeep Wrangler. You gotta think though, I'm really I'm a real I'm a, I really like close. So like these Prada boots right here, like come on, like mm-hmm. Shay Shay was like, Yo, bro, those are hard. I was like, mm-hmm. I've never wow, look, they're so old. A piece just came off. You see that? <laughs> First ever. <laughs> so those aren't dead stock. No. Yeah. You actually, you walked in those in New York. And I got the black pair. Wait, is this the, br- oh no, this is the, br- this is the, this is the same, same pair. I'm colorblind. You, you, I'm colorblind. You can't tell me shit. Um, I love this. This is like the whole, there we go. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are the black products. Um, I'm more of like, another thing, I just like, I like runway stuff. Like, you know, these are the, the Prada Flower runway. Those are insane. You know what I mean? Like, I'm more, that I like insane. runway stuff. Um, so, so for me, so for me, when I look at clothes, um, <laughs> you know, like these Virgil LV cowboy boots, I've never, the only person I've seen in these ever was Ace Araki. You know, so like I really like take fashion very serious when it comes to style and things like that. So it's like it's very hard for me to to say, oh, this person can dress or like, you know, or he can't dress or, he, you know, I'm very, very, it takes a lot for me to say, oh, this guy's fly. You know, Okay, fuck it. Let's do that then. Let's do that. Give me your league fit starting five. Uh, first team, but just for this season, like uh, no, on, like man. like wipe I, your mem, wipe I, your memory of last season, the seasons I, before that. Just so far this season, we're like what, I, like eleven games in? I can't. Twelve, I can't. yeah, eleven, twelve. Week That's four. a tough question. Because like it's 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 too it's too er, it's too early. I feel like it is, yeah, it is early. That's why it's tough because we could say the past five years, you know, everyone's got the kind of the same answer, but just this year, who's impressed you so far in the limited sample? Uh, Who's impressed me? Uh, uh, Not even really impressed. I like it. Um, I'm not, yeah, no, no one's impressed me. (laughs) I would say Tyrese definitely been impressive. No, 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 no. You can't you don't get a close Tyrese that shit. Right. <laughs> um, uh, who's impressed me? I've been impressed by Tyrese though. On and off the court. Yeah. Who's impressed me? Um, you know who has been impressing me? Who? I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm not, I'm not even gonna say it because I I'm not gonna say it. Because he he his fit yesterday was very, very, ugh. 
But I think who I know who we're talking about then. I think I know who I don't know who it is. Who is it? Joe, guess. Is it Jeremy Grant? Uh, this fit yesterday was weak. Is, is it? I don't know. It could Bro, be. Could he be. the it first is. basketball. He the first basketball player to wear Margella tabbies, though. The league fits. He impressed me. Is, He's been impressing me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, it was so funny though. Uh, the league damn, bro, section. You that, bro. You just, bro, I'm okay. in tune with the culture. Don't play with me, dog. Okay, I know what I'm bro. talking what about. Bro. Huh? I'm from the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Word. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Dis- disregard the a, LA half. He's been the impressing area. me. I'm not gonna lie. Me too. He's the league like fit somebody. section. They never seen tabbies though. The comment section, they were like, "What are those ass kicking shoes he wearing?" Nah, nah, nah. Like, <laughs> league fits has never seen tabbies before. I seen. I seen him at the GQ. I seen him at Kendall's GQ event. Like he's been outside and during Fashion Week, you know. He's, oh, we outside with you it. You know, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's somebody that's impressed me. All right, four more. Oh God, ain't no way we get four more. League fits, league fits, starting five this season. Or maybe somebody you want to see posted more that we don't, you don't really, who knows? Honestly, um, you guys gotta. When, you guys don't post Brandon Ingram a lot, bro. You guys got to uh, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of pictures the Pelicans. Yeah, that's probably because he comes late to the games and the, the photographers leave. But yeah, Brandon Ingram's like his body frame for clothes, like it's yeah. looks good, bro. I love uh, Bi. He's a North Carolina cat. Consistent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bi yeah. is definitely somebody that that needs to be posted more. Especially he got the '80s look with the fro going on yeah. right now. Hair I is an like, accessory. Yeah, like Bi got his own. He's in, he's in his own lane when it comes to like when he really wants to like he could really put that stuff on and when he's chilling he's just chilling. You yeah. feel me? Um, definitely, definitely, definitely feel like Jalen Brown is needs to be posted more. Also, Jaylen people say Brown. that he's he's underrated. I don't I don't know if he's made a league fits team yet, but Jaylen I think Brown, he's already Jaylen a lot this year. It's my yeah. guy. Um, yeah. I uh, I really, 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 really like D'Angelo Russell's style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. I, I don't think it's quite where it was last year. It's not. But it it's really isn't, smooth. but it's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's fit yesterday that I saw I really like. I saw um, that you sent that to me. Yeah, yeah. I really liked it. I love Devin Booker's style, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, Kyrie also. Kyrie, mm-hmm. I told you, Kyrie gives me that, like, He's on his skater, but he's just chilling, laid back type of style. Especially my wardrobe he, is probably closest to Kyrie's. Yeah, I think I think Kyrie, I think when it comes to trench jackets, Kyrie does it like no other. Like you gotta oh, yeah. go back and look at the maybe like 20 when he was on the Boston Celtics, when he would do like the cutoff gloves with the jackets with the hoodies on the knee. Yes, like, that's the cutoff the Kyrie, gloves. Like Kyrie was in his bag bag. I love gloves. Doing. I want to see more gloves in the tunnel. Um LeBron James, I think, has, like, that older man, you know. When it comes to, like, jewelry, I would say, because I pay attention to that, too. When it mm-hmm. comes to, like, jewelry, watches and things like that, I'd give it to LeBron. I'd give it to, um, I haven't really seen the, like, I'd give it to LeBron. I would give it to um, P.J. Tucker when it comes to jewelry. P.J. Tucker's jewelry game is is insane when I when it comes to, like, the no diamonds. I think people need to retire those no diamond watches, but that's just me. My style is not a flashy guy when it comes to stuff like that. I'm more of a like, you know, Cartier type of guy. No diamonds could change the, yeah. the, the color on the, you know, that's more me. But uh, that's such a tricky say. subculture for me though, because I feel like you can kind of you can kind of like buy your way into the watch game from from a casuals perspective like me I'm not in the watches so like I feel like a, a LeBron James can probably easily buy his way into like the higher yeah, ups of the watch watches. game. I, I mean yeah. I, the other day I, I saw LeBron with a all blue AP and I was like what I ain't never <laughs> seen an all blue AP before but that's just I, ignorant money. That's what I'm trying to say like Bron when it comes to watches Watch game is impeccable. If you bro. have unlimited money, you might as well. Yeah, that all blue AP. Go back and search that. Y'all better post that. Brian yeah, had an all that. blue AP on. That's that's somebody that like I feel like Brock could have the most simple fit on, but if he got that blue AP, like w- what can you say to him? You know, when I when it comes to watches, <laughs> I put Braun. I don't want to say in the same category or compare these guys, but like Pharrell is somebody in music who. 
his jewelry game is impeccable, bro. It's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this world. Tyler yeah, created right. too. I don't know if you guys just saw it. Like that's more like my taste in jewelry. Like his watch collection. I don't know if you guys saw that one Cartier watch. It's like shaped kind of weird. Believe it or not, that's a one million dollar watch. No one knows. Hey, it. you fuck with the Homer sh- with the Homer shit? Definitely, definitely, most definitely. He's one of my favorite hey. artists, Frank Ocean. Same, I actually want here. one of his chains. Would you? Would you buy the dick ring? Oh my goodness! I knew you were gonna ask about that. Yeah. Whoa, funny as hell, brother. Yeah, if money no. was an objection, if money was an objection, would you wear the dick ring? Man, you ask us some crazy questions. <laughs> I'm wearing the dick ring. No questions asked. No, dude. Imagine pulling up to the function. You ever seen that meme where it's like nobody here knows that I'm da da da? I pull up to the function. No one here knows I'm wearing the 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 Homer dick Homer. ring. Yo, you hilarious. Frank Ocean is one of the most influential guys, though, style wise. Yeah. Uh, I saw him at the Balenciaga um, fashion show. So yeah, yeah running too. St- style cars. It's just all. He's just the like. The head of aesthetics. Frank's, All that shit. Yeah, that's Frank Ocean's that guy. Yeah. All right. You're cheating us out of your starting five, though. You can include last season. We'll make it a little easier. Last season and this season, League Fit starting five. Um, starting five. I would say no order. No, no order. order. Huh. Um, see, the thing is, I pay attention to what I want to pay attention to. Uh, That's okay. This is remember, subjective. this is yours. Yeah. Mine's. Yeah, this is like subjective. It's like okay. all opinion based. Uh, Devin Booker, D'Angelo Russell, Shea. Two more, yeah. Frank Jackson. I wish he was playing this year. And Is he not playing? No, nah, he's not on the active roster. Brandon Ingram. It's a right. solid five. That's my I'm with five. that. I'm with that. A lot of people can't Shoot. argue that. Yeah, that's a solid five. No, no, no. I like that five. I There's not a lot of people whose like, basketball fashion opinions I trust. But I trust you. The reason why I say everybody that I said is because they're all true to themselves, in my mm-hmm. opinion. You know, um, I like people who 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 like like for instance, like when Bi retires, people are gonna say he never did things that wasn't him. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's better mm-hmm. to be you than to try to do different things to like. Not be you. Shit, that goes for anybody Even, in life. Basketball players, regular people, rappers, any of all the above. You guys want to ask me rappers? I can throw that in too if you guys want. Let's get yeah. let's get your top five best dressed, in your opinion, rappers. Oh, okay. Because there's let's a lot that. of rappers that dress terribly. There's tons uh, of rappers that dress horrible. My five? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, let, no, let's not say rappers. Let's just say artists. Artists. That's cool. Yeah. No order. Keep it to men. Men's wear. Hey, sad Rocky. Yeah. Tyler, the creator. For sure. Okay. Frank Ocean. Steve Lacey. Is Steve Lacey been fly too. Like, even before, like, Bad Habit blew up and shit, like, Dark Red Era, like, he was still fly. Really? I've, I've literally, I'm so asleep. Steve Lacey's very fly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just him. He doesn't try to be somebody he's not. That's the thing. Five. Uh, we talk. Am I, are we talking about currently or general? Because if we talk, yeah, about, currently, 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 it's too easy if you could just say Pharrell five times, like Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. No, I was gonna say I, I was. I was gonna go. I was gonna go Playboy Card. Either Playboy Cardi or Yay. It's Cardi. Who would you, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's Cardi. I was it's, Cardi. Say. it's Cardi. It's <laughs> Cardi. Mean, I was going to say who's more swaggy in hopes of you just saying Cardi, but I think objectively the answer right it's, now is It's Cardi. one of the two. So the, I got six. Um, okay. One, there, of the, so obviously one, of the mo- one of the most random meetings I've ever had was we were shooting Kanye and Donda for the cover of Slam. Like 
obviously this was a while ago. This is like, I don't know, probably a little bit over a year ago. So anyway, pull up to the studio and uh, he's in there with Cardi. So, you know, that makes sense. Kanye and Cardi are in the studio together. But then like the most random person shows up. I've told Joe this story before, but Rick Owens girl, uh, Michelle Lamy pulls up and she looks at me and she's like, am I in the right place? And I was just like, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really get starstruck, but I was kind of starstruck by her. I was like, Cardi here, you in the right place. I was like, <laughs> but that's where I realized like Cardi is so deep in this fashion shit. Like Michelle Lemmy pulling up on him in the My fucking, God. like fuck, literally like fucking arts district skid row area of downtown LA just to kick it. I was like, he's deep in this fashion shit. Man, no, if she's Cardi. coming out to him in this, like it was the fucking hood if we're being honest. <laughs> People like Uzi too. The- Put Uzi in there too, but Ian loves Uzi. I feel like he always brings it. If I could style anyone, if I could style anyone, it'd be Lil Uzi. Yeah, Uzi's a cool dude. Um, yeah, I mean, that's my five. I think, I think uh, Steve is like in his own lane. Like he's gonna be one of those next guys. Like you look at like the Pharrells who got like Chanel behind them, and like you know, um, like Ye had Balenciaga and LV and whatever. Like, I think he's the next one to, like, have a staple brand behind him. Also, you know who I respect a lot? Yeah. I respect Bad Bunny. I think Bad Bunny, too, is in his own lane. Bad Bunny. I love you didn't realize yeah. how fly he was. Fly. I, was posting a, I was posting a Bad Bunny gallery yeah, Bad on Bunny. the other day, and I was looking through my all the pictures, and I was like, I yeah, definitely see that. Yeah, shout out to my man. Yep. Shout out to Storm. Yep. Storm's doing his That's thing. Well, shit, yo. I just want to, we got to wrap it up. I just want to say Definitely. thank you so much for popping on, man. Remember before when we were talking, I was like, you were like, how long is it? I was like, you know, like 20 minutes. You're like, what are we going to yeah, talk honestly, about for 20 I minutes? Know, like, I woke up. Um, <laughs> how long has it been? Because yeah. there's no time. How long it's have we been, been on? This is almost like an, an hour. hour. Almost. It's been yeah, an hour. Almost an hour, somewhere on there. The conversation leads. I knew, it, I knew that, I knew, I knew wow. that'd be the case. 42 minutes 42 is the exact minutes? number, I think. Yeah. Okay. As of now, but yeah. 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 We do numbers over well, here, shit. man. We do numbers hey, over plug, here. Uh, before we head out, plug all your socials, websites, yeah, anything man. you want to plug. Olivier Rogers quick. coming soon. The That's the, the name of my website, Olivier Rogers. I don't got anything on there right now, but um, shortly I will. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, follow Olivier on Instagram if you don't. Um, I'm about to start rebranding. I'm actually... Ian knows this. I'm I'm working on doing a shoot, you know, lookbook and everything. And, you know, just stay tuned for for what's coming next. You know, 2023 is gonna be a big year. Um I'm I'm definitely bringing a lot of things back from the 90s within the brand and things like that, you know, from you know, past history and just growing up in the 90s and things like that. So just look out for that, you know. Um that's pretty much everything for this episode <laughs> um <laughs> there we go yeah well dang it's been another installment of survival of the fitted man 111 episode 111 in the books thank you guys for tuning in thank you guys for checking in peace and love later